Hi, and welcome to Fusion 360. Today, you'll be learning how to use differential pair routing with Fusion 360. But before we teach you how to use it, let's explain one of the most common reasons for using differential pairs. The real world is full of electrical noise. We are constantly moving in a sea of Wi-Fi, radio waves, cell signals, and etc. Our designs need to be able to function reliably in a real world, so noise can be an important design consideration. For some designs that are especially susceptible, a useful technique to mitigate the influence of noise is differential signaling. By defining differential pairs, you can make sure that the key signals on your design are protected from unwanted common mode noise. Now, how does differential signaling work? As you could see, two copies of the original signal are sent down a pair of path with one inverted relative to the other. Now, as the signal travel down the trace, they are both affected by a common mode noise. The word common mode simply means that both signals are affected in the same way. So at the end of the trace, we have the following quantities. As you could see, trace one has signal plus noise, where areas trace two has minus signal plus noise. The op amp at the end represents the difference of operation. This is the origin of differential in the term of differential pairs. That is performed on two signals to recover our original signal. So if we work out trace one minus trace two, we get the following formula. So at the output of this configuration, we have recovered our signal and eliminated the noise that corrupted our signals as they traveled down the pair. This is obviously in ideal circumstances. In practical applications, the operation isn't perfect and the coupling between the two traces isn't perfect either. However, it clearly illustrates the benefits of this type of architecture when working with signals in noisy environments. I will apply what we just demonstrated on this micro USB connector for this design. After defining our connections, let's use the name command to name our new signals. You'll be applying the same name to each signal with the difference of the suffix. One of them will have underscore N and the next one will be underscore P. This will alert Fusion 360 of the existence of a differential pair configuration. At this point, the clearance between both traces can be defined using net classes. But for our example, I'm going to use the clearance settings defined on the design rule checker. Let's go ahead and move over to the board. Now, we're going to use the differential pair routing option available under the route command. Conveniently, you're going to notice that all defined differential pairs will highlight. After selecting one of the signals, the other will simply follow alongside. Once you reach the destination, press enter for quick route to take over. Traditionally, I would have to split each one and finish them independently. I'll continue to route the second part of this trace. I currently have the environment set up for push and shove with the VA option enabled, meaning that as I route my differential pair, I'll move traces and vias that might be in the path. As I reach my destination, I'm going to go ahead and just press enter. That way, quick route will finish it off for me. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the meander command just to fine tune my length matching. If meander are required, they will appear. On your mouse cursor, you will notice the length difference by length and percentage. Use the right mouse button to change meander modes and left click to finish. Meanders are not always needed, but thought it would be a good time to show it combined with differential pairs. Thank you for joining us. Remember, making your product smart is only a tab away. All this and more with Fusion 360.